Okay, today we want to talk a little bit about the development of microstructure in binary isomorphous alloys. So we've talked in our last lecture about um, uh, how to analyze those uh, binary isomorphous phase diagrams. Now we want to talk a little bit about what that implies for the microstructure of these materials. So let's take, for example, here a cooling of a copper nickel alloy. And so we're going to do this, uh, like I say, just via an example. Uh, we're going to take a 35 weight percent nickel uh, uh, alloy of a copper nickel alloy at 1300 degrees C. Uh, so it's going to be a liquid. And what we want to find is we want to find the microstructures, the phase compositions, and the weight fractions that result from slowly cooling uh, the alloy to 1270 C, 1250 C, 1225 C, and 1200 C. So what we're really trying to do is to start at this point, and we're going to just cool down to right there, cool down to here, to right there, and then finally cool down to about 1200 C. Um, and ask the question, what does the microstructure look like as we as we go down there? Um, so let's first look at what the microstructure looks like initially. Uh, initially, it's hopefully straightforward. Uh, at 1300 degrees, we have a pure liquid. So the only phase present is a liquid. Uh, it's at 35 weight percent nickel. Um, and it's, it's a, a phase amount or its weight fraction is just one. So that one's hopefully straightforward. Now let's go ahead and cool it just to below the liquidus line. So 1270 uh, degrees C, which is uh, indicated by this point B. So now we have mostly liquid, but just a little bit of alpha is going to start to nucleate. So we draw our tie line like we talked about in the previous lecture to find the phase compositions. And we find that at least at this uh, particular temperature, the liquid has a phase composition of pretty much 35% because it's mostly liquid still. But any of the alpha phase that's nucleated has a phase composition of 46%. Uh, so we want to find out how much of uh, uh, liquid and how much of alpha exists. In this case, because we said already that it's at the liquid uh, composition is roughly at 35 weight percent nickel, our level rule will come out to be 100% liquid and and 0% alpha, but really we're just on the other side of that line, so we'll say it's about 99% liquid and about 1% alpha. And so if you were drawing that microstructure, you just draw little dots to indicate the alpha is beginning to nucleate inside the liquid, and then the green would be uh, the liquid surrounding. So that's, that's step two, cooling down to 1270C. Now let's go ahead, cool further down to 1250C. Um, more of the alpha phase uh, is going to develop, right? So we, we're coming down here. We're getting a little closer to this solidus line, which means that we will have more alpha. So we do the exact same procedure to find the phase compositions again. Uh, so our tie line uh, shows that the liquid phase has a phase composition of 32 weight percent nickel, and the alpha phase, the solid phase, has a weight co uh, phase composition of 43 weight percent nickel. So remember, the, uh, when it began to nucleate, the uh, phase composition of the, the uh, alpha was 46%. Now it's 43%. And you can see that as we go down in temperature, we're going to expect that phase, com the phase composition of the alpha to go down as well. So as we change the temperature, uh, the phase composition of the alpha phase uh, changes. So that's important to remember. So how much of each is here? Well, we go back to the phase amounts. We use the level rule and find that the weight fraction of the liquid is about 73% and the alpha is about 27%. And so what we would draw is just the green liquid with now a growing uh, alpha phase particles. Okay, now let's cool down to 1225. At 1225, we're just above the solidus line. So we're now we're primarily uh, alpha, uh, very little liquid, but some liquid still remains. Uh, we apply the same procedure uh, as we've done previously. We want to draw our tie line. We're going to see that the phase composition of the liquid is 24 weight percent nickel. The phase composition of the alpha is 36 weight percent nickel. So again, decreasing like we, we had said. So uh, we want to know how much of each is present. So we apply the level rule to get our phase amounts. And we see that the weight fraction 
of the liquid is about 8% and the weight fraction of alpha is about 92%. And so now we're starting to grow these blue alpha grains very large. Okay, let's now cool down to 1200 degrees C. Uh, what that does is it puts the microstructure in the pure alpha region. So obviously alpha is the only phase present, um, uh, which means that we can just read off the phase composition from the plot. Uh, it's obviously 35 weight percent nickel, and the phase amount is um, uh, 100%, uh, 100%, so uh, all alpha. If we want to draw this, we would just simply draw a bunch of grains here of the alpha phase. Now, so far, everything that we've talked about has been slow cooling, allowing the equilibrium microstructure to develop. But I want to remind you a little bit of uh, what we what we had talked briefly about a few slides back, namely that when the solid phase uh, begins to form, it has a phase composition of 46 weight percent nickel, and the last time it forms, the last portion of it, it has about it has a 35 weight percent nickel phase composition. So there's a a fairly large drop. Um, so 46 weight percent down to 35 weight percent. How are we going to achieve that? Well, the only way we can achieve a uniform 35 weight percent uh, nickel composition, which is what we need right here in the E, this, this point uh, here inside the solid um, uh, phase, the only way we can do that is to have diffusion uh, from the high concentration alpha that was formed at this time to the low. Uh, this takes time. So as a result, um, this doesn't typically happen uh, in, in real systems because uh, we, we can't cool it that slow. And we're trying to usually achieve other things by cooling a little bit more rapidly than what would be required for equilibrium cooling. So if we had a slow rate of cooling, we would have something that looks like this. A uniform 35 weight percent nickel solid solution alloy. That's what would be, uh, be in here. But in reality, what we typically have is a faster rate of cooling. Uh, and it results in a cord structure, which is a little bit more realistic. So what we're looking at here is, um, this is the grain. We have the uh, alpha here that's first to solidify at 46 weight percent. And then it's going to have... Uh, differing and decreasing uh, values of uh, uh, weight percent nickel phase composition values as we go out from that nucleus. So, and, and to make this whole thing uh, uh, come out as uh, 35 weight percent nickel, which it must, then these last regions uh, inside this structure, or at the, at the outside of the structure rather, uh, are lower than 35 weight percent nickel uh, because the average phase composition is still 35 weight percent nickel. So the idea is that it still holds uh, in terms of um, in terms of the what the phase diagram shows, but the composition of the alpha phase for any individual grain is not actually uniform. So that's that's something that's important to remember. Um, I want to talk a little bit too about what is the effect of solid solution alloying on mechanical properties. Well, uh, if you remember from class, we talked about uh, what what do we want to do to make a material stronger? Well, we want to impede dislocation motion. It turns out that adding substitutional impurities to a metal impedes dislocation motion. So we expect the strength to increase and then correspondingly the ductility to decrease. And that's exactly what we see here. So uh, on the this plot on the bottom left, uh, showing you a copper nickel um, composition and then what the tensile strength is at zero percent nickel we have all copper so this would be the tensile strength of copper any sort of alloying that we do is going to impede dislocation motion so it's going to raise the strength of the material similarly if we go over to where we have a pure nickel um, allo uh, material or uh, uh, metal any sort of alloying we do with copper is going to raise the tensile strength. So we end up with some sort of a peak in here where tensile strength is maximized. And then correspondingly, we could make the same arguments and find that that, occur, that um, the same peak occurs as a minimum for the elongation or the ductility of the material. So uh, that's sort of the, the concludes the discussion of the main features of, uh, of uh, the binary isomorphous uh, phase alloys and diagrams, and uh, hopefully that's all fairly clear.